we are we are dealing with this issue every day. We have the full force of the federal government. We have the full but power Peter, of private enterprise. But Peter, in fairness, the government was clearly the ill-prepared for this. For their full the government was clearly ill-prepared for this. This is not something that, it, you know, this these viruses happen and how awful they are but there are things that happen your government knew in the summer when it did a drill that this if this happened this would be a problem and there was a lack of preparation which is why you we have you on to talk about the supply chain sure. right now and, it looks like the capacity may I, may I for the u.s is that? going to be about two hundred thousand sure. ventilators and what experts are saying is that there could be a million needed so are you going to be able to meet that de demand so, and are so, you aware, so first of and is all, the president aware that, that relaxing restrictive measures so, is going to mean look, look, that you need more let, than let that? Me, let, me, let me bring you up on the history here of what, what we inherited. In, in 09, when the Biden, uh, uh, Obama administration had the H1N1 flu crisis, Peter, why are you that wasting your time on this and on. not solving the problem that you have? You, Peter, why are you even you talking asked about me, this? You, you made the claim that this I administration was ill-prepared. I am trying... Run the I mean, tape. Fact, I just Peter. heard that. I, I run that the tape. Fact, you just said that. Peter. Now let me respond I'm, to that. I'm asking you. Let, let I'm asking respond, you if Rihanna. you're going to be able to get to Rihanna. a million Rihanna. ventilators. Why do you? I, I'm Why? trying to respond to you, and you keep like interrupting me. My question, like, Peter, is: Are you going to be able to get here. to a million? Let's Can just you get have to a million conversation here. You keep talking in my ear, and you won't let me talk. Can may I speak, please? Will you answer the question? Can you get to a million ventilators? That wasn't the question. You started by saying this administration was ill-prepared. Let me explain something to the American people. This whole stockpile, which was engineered for, for uh, the basically a 100-year flood, and we've got here with the coronavirus the 500-year flood, and that's the problem. We have woken up to the fact that we did not have adequate uh, material in our stockpiles and more importantly all of our supply chain is spread out over the world at a time when 10 out of the top 20 countries that provide us with pharmaceuticals are imposing export restrictions so we are running as fast as we can to get the people of America what we need we are surging incredible amounts of material into places like New York as we speak we are having the most rapid industrial mobilization uh, since World War II. We are doing the best we can, but don't tell me that we were ill-prepared for this because we, had, we inherited a system of testing, we inherited a system of stockpiles that was woefully inadequate for this, and there was plenty of people to the last two administrations who had wake-up calls and they went back to sleep. That's not what we're doing. We're going to fight this right. com, this virus, and after it's Look, over, Peter, we're going to be Peter, stronger and Peter, I'm just going to tell you, you're wasting prepared. everyone's time. You're wasting everyone's time with this. It's 2020. The president was elected in 2016. Can you get to a million ventilators? First of all, that number is is way, way, way out of what can out you of get proportion. to? Then? We are going to do our best to get the ventilators we need as quickly as possible. I, we're I am, this is these are look, we're working Peter, as I'm fast so, as we can. Peter, I looked. Peter, hang on, I'll, I'll give you numbers. If you think that speaking in facts and truth is frightening ventilators people, from Phillips, you have a problem. Why do you keep shouting in my ear? I don't understand. It's I'm well, trying to give you some numbers and question. answer your questions. Okay, please. I, I hear it. He, here, watch. Watch me answer the question. For, we got 43,000 ventilators, at least, that are come from, come from Philips. We're working with GM and Ventec, and, and they may be able to produce as many as 80,000 by the end of the year. Ford and GE are partnering together, and there's eight other uh, companies on our spreadsheets where we're looking to, to get them to up their production or take whatever inventory they've got. We are working really hard on this, and we are surging capacity to places they need it. And I think what's important for CNN here is, is, is to report this in a sober way without frightening in America and, and just having reasonable conversations when somebody from the White House comes on and instead of just shouting in our ear. Peter, I will tell you that one way that I think a lot of people are calmed down is when they have information. And even if it's bad news or it's difficult news to hear, they know the size of the problem and they know that the government has a plan for it. That is what we're trying to get with you. You're in charge of the supply chain. That is the most pressing issue right now. I don't know that I if actually I have may. too much of a clearer picture having spoken to you today. 
If we get on TV and it gets sensationalized, you stir people up, it's just it just leads to bad things. That's my point. I, we are working We're just as hard as we possibly can with the full force of government and the full force of private enterprise, and that's the best we can do right now. We all as a country got dealt a bad hand by China. Uh, Peter, that is just a waste of time to say that. I'm going to leave it there, Peter Navarro. No, hang on. We're just what? trying to get our hands around the... Why, no, why, Peter Navarro, why is that's that a waste it. We're of time. time to say, say we're, out that. Of, we're out of time, and that's just... Okay, that's ridiculous. good to talk. Peter Navarro, come thank back you so anytime. much. All around. Amid the gross mismanagement of this outbreak, the silver lining is that reporters are finally starting to hold these Trump administration officials accountable for their actions without just letting them spew their lies unchecked. This is CNN's Brianna Kailar refusing to allow White House trade advisor Peter Navarro to shirk responsibility for the administration's botched response to the outbreak with a constant deluge of finger pointing at the Obama administration and China. Now, Navarro leans on the excuse that what we were prepared for was the 100 year flood, but what we got was the 500 year flood flood in the coronavirus. But two things. One, we weren't even prepared for the 100 year flood. Trump eliminated our government's global health and biodefense positions in 2018. Trump closed the global health security unit at the NSC. Trump disregarded warnings from Obama administration officials about what could quote, become the worst influenza pandemic since 1918. And Trump ignored warnings from our own US intelligence reports in January and February about a likely pandemic. So forget even a 100 year flood, this White House wasn't ready for light rain. And two, Navarro really doesn't have any ground to stand on by claiming that it's some catastrophic event when countless countries across the world are managing to get this under control. Japan and South Korea and Hong Kong and Singapore have all managed to flatten their curves while ours continues to spike. And that's because their governments took these simple steps that our government still, to this day, has failed to implement, like large scale testing and nationwide orders to shelter in place. This really isn't rocket science, it's basic cause and effect. The Countries that have governments willing to listen to the experts and show some leadership are overcoming, and others, like ours, simply are not. Navarro goes on to try and shame Kylar for reporting the facts surrounding coronavirus by accusing her and others of sensationalizing the outbreak. But reporting the facts, however terrifying they might be, isn't sensationalism, it's the truth. And the American people would rather have that than these Republican officials coming on TV and telling them that everything is fine. Because as we've seen, that approach is actually dangerous. By failing to adequately inform people of the dangers and downplay the severity and at times even the existence of the virus, we fail to contain its spread. And now, because of that, the United States has the most cases of coronavirus in the world, officially surpassing both Italy and China today. When Trump said that we'd be sick of winning, I didn't realize we should take him literally. But look, the issue at hand here, and the one that Navarro spent this entire interview sidestepping, is that despite dangerous shortages of masks and gloves and ventilators and protective equipment, Trump still won't invoke the Defense Production Act, claiming that there's no need to because private sector businesses have stepped up. Well, I, I talked about the Defense Production Act a lot, and I've, uh, you know, I've enacted it. I have it. I can do it with a pen. And we have actually used it on two minor occasions, and then we could withdraw it. But for the most part, the companies, we don't need it. We say we need this, and they say, don't bother, we're going to do it. I mean, we, we're dealing with Ford, General Motors, 3M. We're dealing with great companies. They want to do this. They want to do this. They're, they're doing things that, that, frankly, they don't need somebody to walk over there with a, with a hammer and say, do it. They are getting it done. We're, they're making tremendous amounts of equipment, tremendous amounts. But one, it's not the private sector's job to fill in for an absent government. And two, private sector companies might be working to produce those things now, but we needed them weeks ago. We have doctors reusing old masks and nurses literally showing up for their shifts in garbage bags. But again, I guess preparation really isn't something we should expect from an administration whose priority is denying that there's even anything to prepare for. Instead, Trump and his mouthpieces stand up at the lectern for televised addresses and get paraded onto cable news shows to try and change the narrative to say, look how patriotic our big corporations are. They're working diligently to get us millions of masks. And to their credit, they are. But we don't pay taxes to 3M or Ford. We pay taxes to the federal government so that at the very least, they can keep us safe. Forget everything else. Forget the beef with big government because at its core, when stripped all the way down, our government's top priority is to ensure the safety of its citizens. And the fact that the Trump administration couldn't even manage that 
when they had the opportunity to mitigate these issues, when they had the opportunity to invoke the Defense Production Act immediately, when they had the opportunity to accept the diagnostic test from the WHO, when they had the opportunity to call for a national shelter in place order, is proof that the government has failed at its job. So Trump and people like Peter Navarro will undoubtedly continue to pop up and blame Obama and China and everyone else but themselves. But as Brianna said, it's been almost four years. It's time for this administration to grow up and accept responsibility because it's not Xi Jinping or Barack Obama in the White House, it's Donald Trump. Although in situations like this one, we'd probably have been better off with no federal government at all.